Kjell Åker Rydén. I work with, uh, oh, this I can see here as well. Brand consistency, digital tools, and history. Uh, the reason why I work with history is because I've been employed for 40 years. I started back in 82. So when you talk about ABC80 as a day, uh, computer and stuff like that, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so for the last 30 years, I've been working with our history. Um, brand consistency, I've been working with for 20 years. Uh, I've been working with um, the brand in that sense to make sure that we create the image of the company that we need to be trustworthy to make business today and tomorrow. And digital tools is connected to the brand part uh, because what we notice is that the organization needs support to be able to be on brand in all our communication. So I have been involved in several types of digital tools, digital tools to support them to create great irrigation communication where QBanks and the DAM tool is one of them. So I think we've been working together for the last 11 years or something like that. Yeah? Um, and before that, we had not one media bank. We had many media banks. Uh, because oh, everyone needs a media bank or digital asset management tool. And when the organization doesn't get a good tool, they create it themselves. They code it or they use whatever is available. But today, our like, portfolio with QBank in the center looks like this. So to QBank, we connect our Ericsson.com, EpiServer, or Optimizely, as it's named now, Kaltura, which is our media player. We use it both for internally in Ericsson Play and also as a player for Ericsson.com. We have Templify that we use for the office package to create to create communication, and we have to be able to bring in images in the communication. Then we have Marketo, and then we have the global search tool. We have customer product information and learning product information. And we have the eShop and digital catalog portfolio. And then we also down here have the artwork builder to create easy banners, posters, roll-ups, like one-pagers. Uh, so you don't have to have uh, InDesign or Photoshop or anything like that to create those quick fixes that you need. And what I'm going to talk to about today is Brandhouse that we use as our front end. And today is Broom that is running that for us. Uh, and the MSC content portal that we run on the SharePoint site. And as Brandhouse is our front end, of course, QBank is our backend for the media part of uh, Brandhouse. This one I think you recognize. It's QBank backend. When we started 11 years ago, we had a diverse organization and we got a wonderful tool that had all the assets on this side and had a folder structure on this side. So we start thinking of how should we use this. And one way of trying to make all the organization to start storing all their assets in QBank, we thought, okay, let's give them their folder. So we have the group function and all the business areas and all the market areas, research and IPR and employer brand and so on and so on. So they feel that this is my space so they can start putting stuff in there. And then, of course, we had different types of media. Uh, so they started up load up things, tag it accordingly. And when you talk about tagging, these are our tags and our media types. Um, and it's a lot of tags because there is a lot of people and a lot of wishes. I will not tire you with that. I will give you some more information here that we have roughly 92,000 media today, where 55,000 is actually published and used. 30,000 comes from and is published to Epi, optimizely. 13,000 on Brandhouse, 11,000 portfolio and commerce, and then we have a roughly 1,000 that we go out into the office package to amplify. But still, we have only less than 50% are using the folders. So the learning now for us is that folders is great to like make people start using it, 
but it's not so great when people start uploading stuff and tag it, because when they do that, they think they are done. Go in here and drag and drop it into the right folder they are really not interested in. So what we start with now is to start search folders. And that's a tip. If you don't do that, start with that instead. And you can have a structure there. So the first group function actually filter on group function, the organization, and then it filters on the media types or whatever you want to filter on. So search folders is perfect. Now, as we have so many tags and so many media types, we needed to do something else. This is our media bank front end in Brand House. And as you can see up there, we have something called building blocks and ready to use content. Before we only had one thing and we had all the media types there. But to make it easier for the organization to find what they really need, because there are two types of, of users here. There are creators and there are users of communication. And creators, they are looking for the building blocks, like images, icons, templates, and everything they need to be able to create a communication. And then we have the ready-to-use content. So what we did also was to... Uh, what we understood is that everything that we use in our communication use the same tags. When it comes to photos or icons or other templates, they all have different types of tags depending on what that specific media type need is. But when it comes to communication, every communication we do use exactly the same tags. Not only did we uh, be able to create tags, but if you look at the media types, these are all our content, content types or the different type of media that we're using in our communication. So that made it possible to differentiate every communication in, in a much more narrow way as well. Um, all of us have been talking about tagging and the metadata, and it's king, it's really king. Content is king, but tagging is also king. To tag an asset when you upload it takes everything from one minute to five minutes, but everyone that's trying to find that media will gain from it. So if you don't tag it, it will not be used. And that's what we're trying to teach our organization. Tag, tag, tag. But often, when they have spent several weeks of creating something, they think uploading it should go in one second. <laughs> and, and that is stupid. They need to tag it properly. Um, and... When it comes to our communication and how we tag it, we also need to manage our tag properly. And that's why I reach out to, to Hutan and the QBank team, because they have a great asset management tool, but what about tags? Yes, you can define tags and you can tag your media, but we want to manage our tags. So we need something that manages text for us. So together with them, we developed this tool which is our taxonomy tool. And it's a very simple tool, but it's so good for us. Because here we can define all the content tags, content topic, content type, content hashtag. Content hashtags is all the .com that we're using right now. And we have the different target groups, target market, target areas, target uh, personas, and so on. We have the marketing areas, type of marketing, it's... Uh, uh, marketing program, which is like can stretch over several years. Then we have marketing campaigns that it's maybe for a month, and we have activation and activities. Um, and then the metadata. And then we have uh, tag management there. But the thing is here that this is the front end. And for every change that is happening here, if you have the notification on here, which many of our platform owner has, they get a notification whenever we update a tag list with something and what is updated. And you can also see here, for example, that this specific tag is used on Brandhouse, Marketo, MNC Content Portal Repository, and MNC Content Calendar. I didn't talk so much about the MNC Content Portal and Calendar, but what we have is 
we have our assets and we have the MSC content portal, which is SharePoint based. And that's where we plan all our communication. So whenever we have an asset in our uh, media bank that is going to be used in communication, the SharePoint site has a link to that specific asset. That link is then placed into a calendar item whenever it's going to be used. So they can start, as soon as we have created an asset, they can start planning their communication using that asset in the marketing and communication calendar. That's where they planned the communication. And not to talk too much about our taxonomy, but I would like to show you that it's not only a tool uh, that shows our assets, but we also manage our assets. So the back end looks like this. Uh, first of all, we have the administration part where we have some general information where we can change the text in the heading. Uh, we have account management where we have all the people that has access to it, and where we also can change the different access levels and every level what exactly what they can do. So we can connect more function into an access level. And email templates that goes out when a tag is added on and when we want them to do things, we can send out mass mails to everyone that is asking for notification. Of course, we can also have webhooks and API, so we can push out the tags to the different platforms where they uh, are used. Uh, so far, we have not done that. Uh, we are, let's go back here. The button up there is a download button. For now, we are downloading the Excel sheet where they can filter out exactly on their platform so they get the tags that are using in their platform. So they still manually update their platform because they want to feel that they still have control. But we're moving towards or automatic API or webhooks so we can push out the tags as soon as we update something. So this is the administration part and then we of course have an event log where we can check exactly who has done what and when and why. And on top of that, we also have a suggestion box. I don't saw, know if you saw on the first page there, let's go back there again. We have the tag list and we have suggest tags. So anyone in the organization can suggest the tags that they need in our communication. I don't have to mention about tags. Tags is to find asset, is to be able to personalize, automate, and also to be able to measure. We know that, everyone else has said that. And that's why tags are so important. Uh, so everyone can suggest tags, and this is where we manage all the suggestions that are coming in from the organization. So we have a taxonomy board that comes from all the market areas and business areas. And together we look at the need, if that tag is actually needed, or if you have another tag, or if you should name it differently. And so here is where we approve the tags, and then if so the notification is on, they get information whenever we publish the tag in our taxonomy tool, so they can also update their platform with this tag. Uh, Ready-to-use content was all the marketing communication that we have. To be able to motivate our external agencies specifically to deliver all our assets in a secure way and in a consistent way and as ready to use content into QBank, we have created a specific upload form. So this is, uh, as long as you, as an external agency has, has access to our brand house, you will also have access to our upload form. And um, this upload form is divided into two parts. It's upload, but you can also go in and edit your asset. As we had a lot of old assets before, like a video, it was tagged as video and all the video tags. But now we want it to be ready to use content and all, with all the new tags. So if they take the ID from that video, click that in there, they are able to re-tag all that, uh, re-tag that video with all the tags for ready to use content and republish it. So they can actually update old assets to the new media type through this form. But firstly, is this meant to be able to upload um, when they have created something for us? Um, a form is not only a tool, it's also a communication channel. So you can see there are two buttons there. There is one for choose files 
and one for choose zip file. Uh, they do exactly the same thing. The only the zip button does is to filter out zip files, so you only see zip files, so it's easy to find them. But it's also a signal to them that we want you to zip all original artwork, as we call it, or artworks, as I call it, uh, with InDesign files, Photoshop or Illustrator files that you have, so we are able to reuse maybe translate or change some images or whatever, and we don't have to go back to the same uh, creative agency to do it. We have in our frame agreement that everything that they create as soon as they get the purchase order from us is ours. But they are a little bit reluctant to actually send it to us, but this start to motivate them actually to do it. It's, we show them that now you actually need to zip all the original artwork and send it to us. Uh, we also have an internal agency that can absolutely do some many minor changes to this, so uh, it's perfect for us as well, so we don't have to go back to the external creative agency to do it, like a spell change or whatever it might be. Uh, here you can also select if you want to group the assets or not, and you can uh, drag and drop the assets so you get the one that you want to be the main asset in the group at the top. And when you've done that, you start tagging. I will not go through all the tags here, but just show you a little bit what, what's coming down here. Is that we have a lot of dates. Uh, when it comes to asset, legal rights is the king as well. Because we need to have good control. What is our legal rights for this asset? How long can we use it? That's why we have legal rights to use. We also have a valid until to use, which means that this should only be used till that date. Maybe a new replacement of a product is coming, uh, but we still have the legal right to use it, so we can reuse the original artwork and maybe change it to the new product or whatever. Limits on use is if there is an organization that um, wants to use something only for them, then they can write limits on use, and we have this little beautiful orange triangle in the media bank. Content owner email. Uh, way too often, we have had external agencies that have written their email there, as if they were the uh, content owner. No, they are not. It's always an Ericsson employee that is the media owner. And what happens here is that if they don't put an Ericsson email that is valid, according to our AD, it will not be able to send it. So they have to specify an Ericsson person. They, of course, also here uh, can specify what agency has done it. So on the front end, our media bank, on every asset, we can see which agency has done it. So they can see this is kind of like their marketing channel also. So that also motivates them to actually use this upload tool. Delay availability of asset. Uh, so Whenever you push the save tags and publish asset, what it does is they publish the link to the SharePoint site and MSC Content Portal so they can start planning the communication. But they don't, if you delay it, publish the asset on Brandhouse in our front end for QBank. You can go there, you can see all the metadata, but you cannot download the asset and you cannot see the asset until that specific date. Because there are some assets that we want to keep secret before maybe uh, two days before we have the actual execution of the communication. And also we have a checkbox there to <clears throat> inform the content owner about the update uh, or the upload. So they are aware of that now this video or this brochure or this poster or this banner has been uploaded. So they get the mail and the link to the SharePoint site and the Brandhouse uh, asset site so they can see that it's actually there. Um, so both the taxonomy tool that we have created and this upload page is really, really good tools that we use today that we didn't have for, for a year ago only. So kudos to QBank that helps us with that. So just a quick walk through what have we gained from this. First of all, we have a secure delivery. Our IT department always push us, you cannot use Spend, send it, we transfer, whatever, because it's not secure. So doing this, we know it comes to Ericsson in a secure way. 
Original artwork will enable reuse of our assets. Edit names at upload, often they have a file name and we want them to have a specific name when they uploaded it because when we download the file, when you have the file on your computer and going to use it, you want to be able to identify it in a good way. That's why we have a naming rules of our files. And if they forgot that, when they have like, selected all files that are going up, they have a chance <coughs> to edit the names in the upload form. And they also have a link to the naming structure that we want them to use. Uh, we're also able to select and update parent media in group. So if you have uploaded the asset, and you didn't update the name, and you had the wrong parent media, then you push, uh, enter the in edit form, edit box there, the ID number, then you can go in and rename the assets, you can put the right asset at the top, and you can even re-tag it if you want to. So you don't need QBank backend access to be able to do these simple things. So it's really, really user-friendly from that perspective. Uh, secure Ericsson Media Owner. Simple update of media, that's what I said. Uh, reuse of tags. So if you have uh, different media types that you're uploading, you're uploading a video and then you're uploading a banner that goes in the mail to pr promote the video, they have exactly the same tags. So what you do is upload the video, then you put in the... Uh, you actually don't have to put in it because when you have uh, publish it, all the tags are still there. So if you upload a new item, it will have the same tags. But if you want to reuse assets from another, uh, tags from another asset, you can again enter the asset there, and then you just clean the asset list and upload a new asset and the tags are still there. So you can reuse previously, loaded, previously uploaded media tags. Uh, so the tool does not only publish on, on uh, Brandhouse, as I said, it's published now on um, MSC Content Portal. We're looking into for videos to automatically publish them on uh, Kaltura as well. So we don't have to redo that every time because every video that is ready to use content is going to be used probably on internal or ericsson.com. So why not publish it directly to the Kaltura player? Uh, we can d delay download access to media. And finally, we can, inf uh, this is not finally, but inform media owner about the upload or edit. And finally, as I'm working with brand consistency, trying to make sure that every communication that we do is on brand and create the right perception of us as a company, I have a hard time to make all our agency send the material to us to get it approved before they send it up. So be proactive is hard but be reactive is now easy. So, okay, if we didn't see it before, but now we see it. This gives us a possibility to identify all the communication that we do and also talk to the agency that has done it and explain to them how their communication that they have created for us could be even better and more on brand, as we call it. That was my story. Thank you.